Hi, hello, good morning. Today we're going to talk about the second quote from the Glow with Love. I want to say it's called Glow with Love collection from Bobby Brown. This collection features things. I actually don't know what it features. I know that it features two quads with baked eyeshadows, like looks baked eyeshadows from Bobby Brown, and that's really all I care about. So yesterday we talked about the um, quad in the shade Milky Way, and today we're going to talk about the quad in the shade Starcrossed. And Starcrossed is really, really pretty. I can't wait to uh, put it to the test. But before we get into that, actually one of you requested an additional swatch for Milky Way. So before we get into swatching even Starcrossed, I'm going to do one more additional swatch for the shade Milky Way because um, I got a request to swatch the baked shade from this quad against the baked shade from the Bridgerton 2 palette. So this one here, that has the little B. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to swatch the matte shade because I think in terms of tone that might be more similar. But Bobbi Brown, Pat McGrath Labs Baked Shade, Pat McGrath Labs Matte. And I think they're actually quite different. You will see that the shade from Bobbi Brown has like a bit of like a mauve purple neutral tone to it. Uh, and I think in terms of the tone, the matte shade from the Bridgerton palette is actually much closer, although this is so much softer and so much lighter. So an additional note to be added about this shade is if you have a darker skin tone, I don't know how much you will really be able to build up the shade from Bobbi Brown here and whether it's going to look like anything on you. So that's something to keep in mind. I think the three baked shades are going to be no problem whatsoever. I don't know whether you can do much with the matte shade if you have anything but a light to medium skin tone. Whereas the shades from Pat, obviously punchier, they're going to work just fine for people of a darker skin tone. And I think this matte is in particular is like the punchier, more pigmented, deeper version of the shade from Bobbi Brown. So there you have the three shades together. So now without further ado, let's get into the shade Starcrossed. So Starcrossed seems a little bit of like a smokier, cooler toned kind of palette because Milky Way, even though it has some cooler elements to it, for instance, I think the shade Lunar here is very much a cooler toned eyeshadow. These two are definitely on the warmer side, although this one, the the golden overlay leans a bit more on like the cooler to neutral side. So overall, I wouldn't call Milky Way a very warm toned quad, but when you compare it with Starcrossed, I think you can definitely tell that Starcrossed is just a little bit cooler and like smokier in tone. And that smokiness really comes from that dark brown shade here, which I'm really excited about because it looks like a beautiful, like deeper neutral toned brown. Not warm, not orange, not red leaning, not anything leaning. It just looks like a straight up deeper neutral brown. Because of the baked nature of this shade, I don't expect it to be very punchy and very dark, but I do really love the tone. These two eyeshadows certainly lean on the cooler side, and this really is the only like warmer offering. So the matte shade is called Immortal. And then next to that, we have the shade Celestial, which is a rich luster. Then over here we have the shade Stargazer, which is also a rich luster. And then finally we have the shade Petal here, which is a rich sparkle. Now, by comparison, Milky Way contained one additional finish, if you will. And that is this shade here, which Bobbi Brown call a multi-chrome. Now, I also mentioned in my previous video that I interpret these shades a little bit in like the language of Pat McGrath Labs um, baked eyeshadow formulas and to me the shade that she calls a multi-chrome while it does have like different shifts to it I don't know that I would call it a multi-chrome I think it's more of like a duochrome shade and to me this is a like a VR type of formula so while this quad contained a blitz of VR and an astral I want to say that to me both of these shades feel like astrals so that's her rich sparkle formula and I want to say lunar is also a, a rich sparkle so what Bobbi Brown call a rich sparkle I interpret as an astral then the shade stargazer here which is a rich luster is what I would call a blitz so let's recap here we have this like gold shade which honestly doesn't look all that impressive I think by comparison 
the uh, shade in the Milky Way palette, the shade Blossom, that was to me the Blitz shade, looks much more impressive. This is a little bit subtle, toned down, doesn't look all that exciting. Then we have the two like sort of like astral VR type shades, they are like more glittery, they are more duochromy as you can see. So those are the shades Petal and Celestial. And finally we have that delicious, actually like almost like cool leaning taupey brown. Beautiful. I love the tone of that brown shade. So something that strikes me um, now that I have seen like a lot of these Bobbi Brown uh, baked eyeshadows, you're either getting straight up dupes for Pat McGrath Labs eyeshadows. Think of something like Incandescent over here which is a straight up tube for VR Nectar or something like Moonstone, which to me is essentially the same shade as Astral Solstice from Pat McGrath Labs. But then again, often enough, you will look at these eyeshadows and you will think of the counterparts from Pat McGrath Labs, and then when you swatch them side by side, you will see, and I will show you in a little bit, that the Bobbi Brown versions are just like the less amped up versions of the same eyeshadows from Pat McGrath Labs. So Pat McGrath tends to have punchier pigmentation, more vibrant colors, more intense duochromes, so while the shades are extremely similar and probably like the same pigments have been used, the intensity is different and the intensity of the Bobbi Brown shades is just a bit more toned down. With that said, the finish, the formula is still the same, so the same issues are going to remain. If you struggle to get the Pat McGrath Labs eyeshadows to stick to your lids because you don't want to use a glitter glue, you have really hooded eyelids or something like that and the glitter uh, flies all over the place, I think you're still going to have the same issues with these. But if pigmentation, vibrancy and punchiness of the colors was your issue, then I think Bobbi Brown is the way to go for you. So let's compare to a couple of eyeshadows from the Pat McGrath Labs range, which remind me of shades from this uh, quad. Now I will start off by saying I'm not going to even look for dupes for this Stargazer shade here because it is so boring. It is just a light gold with a tiny bit of shimmer in it. Um, and what I think this shade would be excellent for is if you want to go a bit outside of the rosy realm, you could grab this, this, and then put incandescent, so the multi-chrome here over top, to create a somewhat less pinky look. Because honestly, the downside that I will mention with both of these quads is that they're quite rosy leaning. So you're always going to get, or like 90% of the time, you're going to get some sort of a variety of a rosy look. Because both of these have a rosy base to them. And while in this quad at least you have the brown and the gold so you can get out of the rosy realm, if you want to add the sparkle, you are going to go right back into the rosy realm. So I think overall the collection leans quite rosy. If that's not your vibe, you're not going to be super happy with the tones that are present in these palettes. Pink, of course, is also deeply connected to your skin undertones. If you have cooler, like, pinker undertones to your skin, pinks, like even the hot, unflattering pinks, I call them unflattering. They will be flattering on you. They're just unflattering on my skin tone. But these are the kind of pinks that I enjoy and that look good against my skin tone. Anywho, now first I want to compare this shade here, the shade Petal, to a couple of shades from Pat's range. I don't think they're going to be straight up dupes but I do think they're going to be somewhat similar. So the first shade that immediately came to my mind was from uh, one of the baked shades from the Bronze Seduction palette, and I can't remember the name of this shade, but it's this one here. I think this has warmer tones and it's um, much more vibrant in terms of both the color and, yeah, look at that, and the um, sparkle. This is much more of a rose gold, whereas this is much cooler in tone. This is really like a cool toned um, rosy neutral shade. This is much more of a rose gold. And the other comparison I wanted to make, and I think it's actually going to be more similar to the shade from Bronze Seduction, is again from that Bridgerton palette, where we also have this very sparkly rosy shade, which also isn't going to be a straight up dupe. Yeah, no, this is still warmer in tone compared to the shade from Bobbi Brown. The shade from Bobbi Brown is very, very cool toned by comparison from the two um, that we have here from Pat McGrath Labs. So the shade Petal here seems to be rather unique to the Bobbi Brown range. 
correct me if I'm wrong, perhaps I'm missing something. I can't think of a single other eyeshadow from Pat McGrath Labs that is quite similar to this. Now, when I saw this shade, I instantly thought of the VR shade. I think VR... Oh, what is it called? Let's grab Subliminal. I instantly thought of one of the big shades from the Subliminal palette. So let's watch that side by side. And the shade I am thinking about is VR Violet. So we're talking about this shade right here. Let me first watch the one from Bobbi Brown. And then here we have the shade from Pat. And I think this is a prime example of what I mean by the shades from Bobbi Brown are just sometimes the more subtle versions of the shades from Pat. Because the shade from Bobbi Brown has a very similar um, DNA to it. It is a rosy, pinky base with a bluish duochrome. And then you put the shade from Pat next to that and you see how much more amped up this shade is in terms of both the base color and the overlay. And to be honest, that kind of subtlety that you see in the uh, Bobbi Brown eyeshadows really fits the aesthetic of the brand and the target audience of this brand, in my opinion, because I think of Bobbi Brown as like a old white lady brand. I'm sorry, that's instantly the connection that I make. This is like a grandma brand to me. I think their overall appeal really isn't younger, edgier audience. So if it weren't for these baked shades, I wouldn't even like look twice at the display of Bobbi Brown in store. So what I'm going to do today is actually grab the dark brown shade and I'm going to apply that as a base all over the lid because I'm just very curious exactly how deep in tone this eyeshadow is. And as you can see, it's probably rather a buildable shade. These mattes from Bobbi Brown, they're very soft and they don't instantly pack a punch. So they really allow for building up or applying them in a more sheer manner, which I personally really appreciate because sometimes you want to apply that kind of shade as a base color, but you don't want it to be a full on, you know, I'm going to a gala glam smoky eye. You just want it to be like a soft wash if color. And I think this is rather easy to achieve with an eyeshadow like this. I really like it. Again, I'm very curious though, because of the light pigment, how well these are going to show up on anyone deeper than light medium. You, again, are going to have no issues with the actual sparkly shades. It's just the mass that I'm doubting. And the two mattes that I have in the Moonstone Glow palette, for example, they are not going to, they barely show up on me and I am light. They are not going to show up on anybody else. So that's one of the other reasons that I always think of Bobbi Brown as like an old white lady brand. They're just not marketing towards anybody else. Let's apply a little bit of that dark brown also on the lower lashes before we move on to the lid shades. I really like the tone of this brown shade. It is so pretty. It's like neutral to slightly cool leaning. And I love the texture. I love how it looks on the lids. I love the tone. This is a really pretty eyeshadow. I'm really, really happy that they have included a brown in this quad and not some sort of a rosy shade. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of glitter glue to apply on my inner corners and a tiny bit on my moving lid. I got a lot of responses on my previous video on the quad in Milky Way and a lot of you seem to not be able to find these palettes where you are. Like I said, that is one of the issues with these Bobbi Brown releases. They're just really, really random. So keep your eyes peeled and maybe at some point they're going to show up or maybe they're never going to show up, honestly. And don't be too disappointed if you can't get your hands on them because yes, while they're pretty, they're in our beloved baked formula, I'm sure you can achieve extremely similar looks with your Pat McGrath Labs collection. Now I'm going to grab this shade here, the Duo Gromy shade, and I'm going to apply that over the brown because I think a, deep, a, a bit of a deeper base is going to really make this eyeshadow pop. That's very pretty. It's soft, but it has a beautiful amount of sheen and that light, you know, bluish violet duochrome. It is very pretty. These are, you know, undoubtedly pretty eyeshadows. And finally, in my inner corners, I'm going to grab this pink shade here to apply as an inner corner highlight. 
you will have to excuse me we're not going to use the gold shade at all today but to be honest i would rather come back and do a look with that shade the brown and incandescent from milky way together because i just don't feel like this shade fits the look today at all so i don't want to spoil the look just so i can show you all the four shades And I think this shade that I'm putting now in my inner corners would also look very pretty on the lid and it would also look very pretty layered with the duochrome that I have on my lids. And of course I will not just leave you there hankering to see sparkle moment. Here is sparkle moment for all the enthusiasts out there. Very pretty, very shiny. I totally forgot to mention what lipstick I was wearing yesterday, apologies for that. If you were still curious which shade that was, I had Velvet Blush from Lisa Eldridge. And for today's look I completed it with Nude Nocturne from Pat McGrath Labs. This was part of their limited edition Valentine's Day collection in their matte trans formula. It is a gorgeous rosy terracotta nude and I thought it completes this look perfectly. Now, uh, Starcrossed. I actually really really like this quad and something that I think I'm really impressed by is how actually different Milky Way and Starcrossed are from each other. Like it's not immediately apparent when you look on the website uh, swatches how different these are going to be from each other. They kind of come across as like versions of pink and while they are versions of rosy pink they are very different from each other. The looks that you're going to get from these palettes are wildly different. Starcrossed is going to give you much more cooler toned looks, yes with a slightly rosy element to them, but I don't find the pink here to be overwhelming. I don't find the pink in either of these palettes to be overwhelming. Uh, yes there is no rosy element to reiterate myself just so it's very clear that uh, these are still neutral rosy toned eyeshadow palettes, but they are very different and this is going to give you cool toned slightly smoky looks whereas this is going to give you like gentle ethereal ballet pink type of looks so they have a very different like vibe to them if you're unable to get either of them be due to availability issues in your country then please don't be upset about it i'm sure you can achieve a very similar look with your pat mcgrath labs collection you can find a nice cooler tone brown you can find an eyeshadow that gives you this like bluish uh, duochrome you can find a nice neutralish pink in her portfolio honestly all of these shades while beautiful are not so unique that you need to uh, lose your mind over them and like turn the world over to try and find these quads. Yes, they're pretty and if you have the option to get them, especially if you get the option to get them on some sort of a sale, I would highly recommend them if you, like me, very much enjoy that baked formula. But if you can't get your hands on them easily, please don't go out of your way and be super upset that you can't get them. There will always be more of these quads in the future. Bobby Brown tend to re-promote their shades a lot, so I'm sure you're going to see some of these back in their future quads. So the overall conclusion is yes, I really like these palettes. I'm really happy that I was able to get them here. I'm sure that we're not going to get some of the other releases that will come in the future. So for now I'm covered on baked shades from Bobby Brown and I enjoy having these in my collection, I'm not gonna lie. So yes, I enjoy these palettes, but I don't think they're an absolute must-have. So that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it at. Of course you're going to see these quads come back in either pairings with other formulas and brands in my collection or paired together because I actually think some really interesting and cool um, shifts could be created if you combine the two palettes together. Let me know what you thought about this look. I can't wait to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!